American made for American badasses in America. Doing badass American shit. Fuck that pussy ass shit. Extreme. You wanna fuck shit up? Need to open that box? Do it extreme. Nothing but bills in the mail today. Get extreme all over their asses. If you're not rock hard by now, don't even bother watching the rest of this video. Chances are you aren't even extreme enough to handle it. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm honestly not sure what just happened. I think I had a stroke. Uh, but I'm fine now. And that's because I have this. Zero Tolerance 0562, or in this case, the 0562 CF. The CF, of course, standing for carbon fiber. This overbuilt tank of a knife is, of course, a Rick Hinderer design. And by design, I mean it's a Hinderer XM18 manufactured for the masses by the folks at Zero Tolerance. Now, before we go any further, I have a confession. This was my first and is still my only ZT knife, and the only hinder related to anything I've ever come in contact with, at least so far. Which is kind of a shame, considering Big Rick and myself are both freedom-loving Ohio natives. And if you'll believe the hinder hype factory that are other channels like Metal Complex and Slicey Dicey, among many others, Big Rick is a god among men in the knife world. And his work is near second to none, which, if you consider just how prolific and influential Rick Hinder's designs and manufacturing techniques have become over the course of his long career, might not just be fanboy hype after all. And I know, I know, there's a massive population in the knife and EDC community that eats straight out of the palms of Kershaw and Zero Tolerance. But as I got deeper into this hobby-turned-obsession, I, I quickly found myself drawn less towards overbuilt and aggressive knives and more towards super slicey blades and peak levels of fidgetability. And to be honest, ZT and Rick's knives never looked that enticing to me. As a tool, top tier, grade A no doubt, but from a visual standpoint, not my cup of tea. But this, this one hit me a little different. First things first, this is not a small knife. This full-size titanium frame lock is a chunky boy to say the least. Might even go as far as to say she thick with two C's. Tall, girthy, and nothing less than a full-size cutter for sure. It's available in two varieties, this one, the 0562 CF, with that gorgeous and extremely well done carbon fiber scale on the show side, stonewashed titanium on the lock bar side. And there is the full titanium model, or the 0562 Ti, which is stonewashed titanium all around. The CF variant being the slightly cheaper option. Now back to the scales, or scale, in the case of the 0562 CF, it is done to near perfection on this thing. Something about well done, simple, clean, raw carbon fiber weave really gets me going. And the titanium on the lock bar side has that typical ZT stonewashed finish. And I like the little machine details on the pivot, and the extremely stiff deep carry pocket clip has been coated to this, this nice matte black finish to match the hardware and the carbon scale. And the blade, oh dear god, that massive satin finished 20 CV blade is a sight to behold. It really is it as good looking as it is completely terrifying. And it really is a cool looking knife all around, which is why I bought it. I do, however, have a few issues with the design from a strictly visual standpoint. Overall, the shape and the profile, it's nice to look at and a dream to hold in the hand. But there are more screws on this thing than rivets on the Titanic. I've counted 12. 12 screws. At least that made it easy to decide whether or not I'd ever take it apart. I won't. But then there's that absolutely massive Hinderer style flipper tab fish hook from hell. Gee, it's huge. And then you go to open the knife, and bam, it's like half of the hilt of Aragon's sword. And those massive external blade stops continue the bigger is better design language. And as beautiful and clean as the show side is, the lock bar side is all business, and the over travel stop is just as big as everything else. But then, you go to open it, and oh, oh, what is this? Oh, yes. It all makes perfect sense now. The action is magnificent. It turns out that big ridiculous flipper tab, though hideous, gives you all the leverage you need to quickly and violently unsheathe that massive chunk of 20 CV. This thing opens with a level of violent aggression that is hard to describe. It makes all these insanely mechanical and industrial sounds, like clanks and kerchunks as you fidget with it. And as a whole, the action is supremely satisfying. But you will quickly and unfortunately learn that those giant blade stops do not work as thumb studs. See, I like my knives to have multiple modes of actuation, but unless you have a thumb made of wrought iron, you'll be lucky to ever break the insanely stiff detent with those studs. And you can absolutely forget about going in for the reverse flick. It ain't happening. You will, however, quickly forgive these facts when you go to close it. Or at least once you've been able to work out that awkward double clutch detent system, which to me was a big buzzkill, at least at first until I played with it for a while. 
Whatever's going on in there makes it so the knife kind of stops in its tracks and it doesn't close where you would expect that breaking point to be, so it's kind of weird to feel out at first. But once you do get over all that detent strangeness, boy oh friggin' boy, this baby just drops right shut. It's running on ZT's KVT bearing system, and that blade stock is thick and hardy. So you better keep those nubbins far out of the way, or just stock up on band-aids if you decide to order one of these. You'll need them. The pocket clip is fine, it works, it's deep carry, and it is reversible, but it is as stiff and unmoving as the detent, and there really isn't enough open space for material between it and the scales. So if your pants pockets are thicker than a piece of printer paper, prepare yourself for a battle to the death getting this thing in and out of the pocket. Aside from the excellent action, the ergos are where this thing really shines. In the hand is where this thing belongs. Too many screws, brutally stiff in a flat clip, giant flipper hook, all of it makes sense when you wrap your fingers around those voluptuously shaped scales. The awkward hooked flipper tab is now a perfectly placed stop protecting you from that angry blade while you use it. The pocket clip's low profile allows it to just melt away into the palm of your hand. And with your hand wrapped around it, you thankfully are not able to see the screws anymore. No hot spots, no pinch points. It's like squeezing a half-melted stick of butter. Just fills every nook and cranny of the hand flawlessly. Now onto that blade. That blade is no joke. The 3.5 inch 20 CV blade is made out of a stock that is, well, thick. Crazy thick. But that tall flat grind paired with the height of the blade brings it down to a reasonably thin edge. Now I'm a sucker for lightsaber levels of sliciness, which this blade does not offer. It's reasonably slicey and it will most definitely cut and work fine for most EDC tasks, but this knife was meant for so much more than the life of a letter opener. So you won't be blown away by the cutting performance compared to a lot of other lighter duty EDC knives out there. And as for the price, well it's a ZT, so expect to pay around $250 for the carbon fiber variant and around $280 for the full titanium model. But for everything you get with this knife, I don't really have any problems with those prices. In closing, the Zero Tolerance Rick Hinderer 0562 is overbuilt to such insane levels, so that it can be used and abused to an insane extent. It's a great looking knife with an awkward clip and too many screws. It's thick and heavy and extreme in every way imaginable. The action is endlessly enjoyable and superbly satisfying, and it makes incredible sounds as you fidget with it. Sounds that may or may not get on the nerves of anyone and everyone around you. It is no doubt built to last a lifetime, and it is made in America, which I always like to see. But the 0562 is the odd man out in my ever-expanding collection of cutlery. It's almost too extreme for my needs. I feel bad when I carry it for a day, and it only ever sees the inside of a couple of envelope tabs or an Amazon package. I feel like I should be out in the wilderness, batoning logs for my fire so I can skin and roast that 12-point buck I just took down. Maybe someday I'll be able to give the 0562 the life it deserves. But for now, on days when I can actually get it into my pocket, I will carry it around the office in the house, flipping and fidgeting the day away, until the mailman arrives with paper and cardboard to destroy. I like this knife. I really do. I'm just afraid that I'm not good enough for it. So, until next time, thank you for watching. Bye-bye now.